dearest gentle viewer, season two of Bridgerton is practically a buzz, or should I say a wash, with scandalously hidden Easter eggs and secret details you might have missed. And this author has been honing her skills to reveal the most truly delectable morsels to you. Be forewarned, spoilers ahead. There's a sneaky reference to author Julia Quinn who wrote the Bridgerton novels in Anthony's list of potential brides to interview. Among the names he's written in his notebook is Lady Julia, who's characterised as a romantic, and Miss Quinn, who he's noted down as an exceptional writer, both of whom, like the other ladies, are amusingly struck off the list by the incredibly exacting Viscount. Bees have been buzzing around Bridgerton since the show began, and they're back this season, and not just in the flashbacks to Edmund's death. At the races, Anthony claims to bet on a horse named Nectar, as it's well-bred, highly trained, and well-favoured. While Kate thinks he simply picked the same horse as everyone else, but really, it's another example of the show's persistent bee imagery. Nectar is the sugary fluid plants produced that bees collect to make honey. So, given the strong connection between the Bridgertons and bees, it's no wonder that Anthony was subconsciously drawn to a horse by that name. And of course, Anthony's fear of bees is what leads to that scandalous situation with Kate in both the show and books. As well as that, nectar is associated with the idea of immortality, as it's said to be the drink of the Greek and Roman gods. But in the books, Anthony is convinced that he will die at a young age, just like his father. This season, fans get to see one of their best loved scenes from the books, the Bridgerton's croquet-like game of Pall Mall, which is less about winning than making sure the other players lose. It is a poor player who plays the game and a wise one who plays their opponent. The TV show takes two different Pall Mall matches from the novels and mashes them up to create their own version of this fan favourite moment. While the Viscount Who Loved Me, the book this season is based on, has Kate intentionally knocking Anthony's ball down the hill and into the lake, an epilogue that takes place 15 years later sees her deliberately create a muddy puddle with her tea in order to mess up Anthony's game, only to end up covered in mud herself. As in the books, Kate is the player who gets to wield the black mallet, nicknamed the Mallet of Death by the Bridgerton family. The Mallet of Death? Well, would you look at that, brother? But there's an interesting extra layer of meaning to this in the TV show, as Anthony calls the game to an end after Kate's Mallet of Death accidentally hits her ball over towards Anthony's dead father's memorial stone. Notice this painting in Lord Featherington's study of a shipwreck in progress, which is a nice hint to the state of the Featherington family and their finances in much of season two, as well as how terribly Jack's business ventures went overseas in America. And it also foreshadows the disastrous outcome of his and Lady Featherington's scheme to make money in London with fake rubies. After revealing Penelope as Lady Whistledown to us at the end of last season, this season we get to see exactly how she goes about running her society gossip business, including how she masquerades as Lady W's maid to bargain with the printer of her scandal sheet. Printers in this town are ten a penny, but there's only one Lady Whistledown. And the accent that Penelope puts on as she pretends to be Whistledown's maid is a nod to actress Nicola Coughlin's Irish roots. Speaking of Penelope's secret outings, notice that the blue hooded cape she wears to disguise her identity during her visits to the printer is a look that's mirrored on occasions by Eloise when she visits the printers, for example, to try and uncover Lady W's identity in the final episode. Not only is that pale blue in total contrast to Penelope's usual style enforced by her mother, but it also emphasises Penn's close connection with Eloise, whose family's signature colour is blue. On top of that, that Eloise and Penn are dressed alike highlights the fact that in both the books and the show, some characters believe Eloise is actually Lady Whistledown. I know it is you. Lady Whistledown herself. There's a nice bit of foreshadowing during the ball the Bridgertons throw in the seventh episode. When no one turns up except the Sharmas, Anthony decides they should still make the best of the evening. They shall be dancing. And as the two families dance together, they do so around the Bridgerton crest, whose Latin motto means family before all. A nice nod to the fact that these two families will actually be united by the end of the series after Kate and Anthony marry. The tulips that Anthony brings Kate after she recovers are an interesting choice of flower, as last season his mother Violet told him that Tulips. They symbolise passion. Perhaps your bride would like the same. That bouquet of tulips is also a hat tip to the novels, where Anthony plucks one for Kate from the Aubrey Hall Gardens, which his mother has filled with them as they're one of her favourite flowers. 
Given the showrunner's love of the 90s BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, it's hardly surprising that just like the Duke Simon in season 1, this season's leading man Anthony also gets a Mr Darcy style scene, when after sharing a moment with Kate, he trips over her dog and lands in the lake. Refreshing indeed. Come now, it is not proper to stare. The whole scene is also a hat tip to the Bridgerton books, where Newton accidentally knocks Edwina into a lake and Anthony wades in to help her out. Oh, and Anthony gets a bonus Mr Darcy moment when, like the Pride and Prejudice star, I shall conquer this. He works out his troubles about his leading lady during a fencing match. It's time for me to secure my final victory for the day. Bridgerton's trip to the royal races channels the mid-60s movie musical My Fair Lady. The way Kate's excitement at seeing the horses fly by breaks through her usually very controlled demeanour. I'm now high flyer, steady! 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 Should we separate them? It's all in good spirit. Is a homage to how Cockney flower seller Eliza Doolittle reacts at the race course. Come on, Dover! Move your bloomin' And that kind of behaviour also gets Prudence Featherington rebuked by her mother. Stop hollering like a newsboy! At the start of the season, Kate's appearance reflects both her uncompromising character and the pressure of ensuring her younger sister makes a good marriage match for herself and to save the family from ruin. So generally, she has a more buttoned up look, her outfits are very structured and are made of heavier fabrics such as silk taffeta, and her hair is more controlled, in contrast to her slightly lighter and freer look as she opens up and relaxes more as the season progresses. Costume designer Sophie Canale has said that she took cues from India for some of the Sharma's outfits, from colours and prints to jewellery design. Compared to the more demure Edwina, who favours softer, paler outfits, Kate's clothes are much bolder in colour, reflecting her personality and tendency to speak her mind. Anthony's sideburns were trimmed down this season to signal how he's changed since his rakish days in season 1 and is taking a more mature view of his role as Viscount with all its responsibilities including his search for a wife. For Penelope's gown at the Diamond Ball, the show's designers have said they channeled Princess of Pop Kylie Minogue's showgirl look from her greatest hits homecoming tour. Like Kylie's outfit, Penelope's shimmering dress has a wealth of stars across the torso, and there are even more in her hair. While Penn's costume is in her signature yellow rather than blue like Kylie's, curiously in the moonlight, some of the stars on Penn's dress do actually look blue. Just as each of the show's families has their own distinctive colours for their costumes, the same is true of their houses. Check out the Bridgertons' home and you'll see that the palette of blues, silvers and pastels in their outfits is also reflected throughout their house. From the sofas and chairs to the rugs, curtains, ornaments, tea sets, much of the clothing in various portraits, the fireplace and even the family carriage. When it comes to the Featheringtons, their ostentatious fashion choices are all about standing out. Look at me, everyone! And so is their home, with its emphasis on lots and lots of gold, and that includes their social gatherings. Gold flowers, gold drinks, gold everywhere. And their home also features rich greens and plenty of citrus tones, especially yellows. Then there's Lady Danbury's house, which complements both her own style and her guests, the Sharmas, with shades of pink, peach and gold. Season 2 finds Eloise settled in her sister Daphne's old bedroom, so there's plenty of books as she's much more interested in literature than the marriage mart. Might I go and read now? And you'll also spot a portrait of Mary Wollstonecraft, whose early feminist works Eloise has been reading, preferring them to Whistledown's gossip. My own sex, I hope, will excuse me if I treat them like rational creatures instead of flattering their fascinating graces. Wollstonecraft. Despite her protests, Eloise begins a season trussed up to make her society debut, but she still manages to maintain a sense of her more rebellious nature in her everyday attire. So rather than the flowery creations worn by many of the other female characters, we often see her in striped or checked patterns, as well as waistcoats and Spencer jackets, giving her costumes a more masculine twist according to the show's designer. There's a sneaky little meta joke hidden among Lady Whistledown's society papers when the Queen of Gossip takes a moment off from reporting the ton's tittle tattle to write a book review. When Lady W describes the difference between the author's previous books compared to his latest, it's almost as if she's describing the difference between the two seasons of Bridgerton itself. 
So season one was more elusive and subtle, leaving viewers constantly guessing Whistledown's identity. However, with that already unveiled to the audience, in season two there's considerably less guessing and more waiting for the other characters to become aware of the events that we already know. Well, that would explain the ink all over her fingers. Now, if you want to protect yourself online from snoopers like Lady Whistledown, long-time viewers know we recommend everyone use a quality VPN like Nord that encrypts your internet connection and conceals your IP address so you can keep all your online activity private. However, with a standard VPN, you can still be tracked online by third-party cookies and those horrible intrusive ads that follow you from website to website. Then there's that creepy feeling when Facebook starts showing you ads for something you were just searching for, like your obsession with Regency houses. Fortunately, Nord have just launched their new threat protection feature, which blocks trackers and annoying and intrusive ads, making your online experience a lot cleaner, safer and enjoyable. On top of that, it will protect you if you accidentally stumble across a shady site or phishing link that downloads a malicious file to take over your device. Nord's threat protection will scan any sites you visit and files you download for malware, and if a threat is found, the file is deleted immediately. With Nord, you can connect up to six devices at any one time, so you can protect all your phones, laptops and computers. For a limited time, all our viewers can grab an exclusive offer on a two-year plan with a huge discount, plus a bonus month and threat protection completely free. Just visit nordvpn.com slash flicks or go to the link in the video description to get the offer, or use coupon code flicks when you check out. So what did you think of season two of Bridgerton? And did you notice any little details or Easter eggs? Leave your comments below. Next, tap left to discover all the clues and secret bees you missed the first time around in season one. And if you enjoyed this video, do leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I really appreciate it. Thanks for enjoying this show with me and hope you have a marvelous movie loving week. yippee ki movie lovers.